just give it all. Thank you, sir. You know, I, I just felt, I said, okay, I just want him, okay, he can pray, so in case if he wants to go, because some people, they, he said, no, he wants to stay. You know, that is what it means, a body ministry. I didn't want to hold him, you know, but you, that you can see his spirit. Thank you, sir. Go to connect. God bless you. Awesome. Today, I, what I have here, I'm not sure how, because it's more or less leadership teaching. If, if there are many pastors here, it would be good. But there are leaders here. Every one of us are leader. You are leader in your kitchen. Hello? Leader at your, depart, at, at your workplaces where you work. In your marriage, you are the leader. So anytime we are dealing on leadership staff, please bring all our young people. Where have they all gone? Anytime we are talking on leadership staff, don't look at it. Oh, maybe this is too much. Or maybe it's not applicable to me. It may not be applicable to you today, but it will be tomorrow. So my prayer is that this teaching will somehow maybe capture you, maybe... It's more or less something that you more you need people who, who believe they are leaders. But leadership is not an, a, an exercise. It's a, it's, it's a mind position. You need to have that position in your mind that like you are a leader. So I pray, and I'm going to open a few scriptures, many scriptures, because what I want to show you, I want to prove some things through the scripture. Now, leadership, we have all right. God bless you. Father, thank you as we share your word. I stand on, on the atmosphere your, your son has already led. And Lord, I ask you to speak through me in the name of Jesus. Now, projecting messages sometimes can make it dry unless you, you know the quality of that message because you have to be reading through. So once you're reading through, sometimes it can be a little bit of slow, all right? But for me, what matters is you remembering what, you know, what is taught. Anything that, anything that you've been taught, did you remember? If I come and jump up right now and the anointing of God move, you probably will feel, yes, but knowledge is important. Hello, somebody. We all need what? Leaders that have lasted in their throne or that have made a difference in our world are mostly strategic in nature and in their dealing with people, while less strategic leaders are aspiring. If you look around this nation today, if you go to France, the churches are being bought. If you go to um, London, churches are, are bought. Old churches, you know, all these mainland churches, all these churches that are not evangelical in nature, that are not Pentecostal, many of them are going dry. I don't know if you know that. Go, the other day I was reading something about Ireland. They say the mention of a, a, a Catholic, one of the biggest Catholic church there. Ireland used to be a Catholic hub, but it's been sold now. It's empty. Hello, somebody. So if you go around this nation, you realize that most of the old churches in the past are aspiring. As a matter of fact, what the man of God was sharing, sometimes I don't even have hunger to go and start preaching around New Zealand. God forgive me. Because the openness, people are not really open to receive. And sometimes even though you carry that anointing, you struggle to see that anointing being projected because of the hunger. And when the man of God was talking, how he was hungry at the age of 25, he was already, you know, how he was hungry, wanting to know from other men of God, how God was moving. You know, strategically he went to uh, 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 the uh, Dutch testament that just passed away, a spiritual father in this nation, God used to bless New Zealand, went to ask him, say, you came from Africa, can you release that thing on me? That can only happen by people that are strategic, that, by people that are passionate. If you're not passionate, you will not do that. And many of us come to church and just come and go, come and go. We don't know when the angel of God is tearing the watchers. And that is why we are not tapping into what God is doing or from what God is doing. So when leaders are not strategic, they start dying. You know, their leadership starts aspiring. What, what they are building will start to aspire. When you are not strategic in your marriage, the marriage will start dying. I wish to hear somebody. 
When you are not strategic in your relationship with people, it will start dying. It's just a matter of time. Your relationship with your parents, with your loved ones, with your pastors, with your leaders, with your teachers, with the government authorities. Once you're not strategic with it, you will start having problems. I don't believe him building a relationship today and dumping it and then jump into another relationship because it takes time to build a lasting relationship. We know it takes a lot of time. time. Amen? Now I'm going to use biblical um, verses now to prove what I'm about to share. The king of, of AI was a poor strategist. His approach on the battlefield showed his ineptitude and leadership. For example, he called everyone out to the battlefield without, without a plan for the defense of the city. Now, let's quickly look at that. Because there are some, of, some things we do today. The book of Joshua 8, 8 for, we're going to do 8, 14 to 17, and then 20 to 23. There are things we do today that are not right. And the, the way you project your leadership shows the way you think. If you have a poor leadership strategy, a poor relationship strategy, it is because of the way you are thinking. Everything begins from the mind. The Bible says, when the king of, 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 of Ai saw the Israelite cross the valley, amen, cross the valley, he, he and all his army hurried out. What's that, what's that word? He and all his army hurried out early in the morning. And attacked the Israelites at a place overlooking the Jordan Valley. But he didn't realize there was an ambush be behind the town. Use the NIV. Many of us do not realize what is fighting us. We are just living our life anyhow. But we don't know that the enemy is after us. Keep going. Now, when the king of Ai saw, okay, another verse. Joshua and, all his, uh, Joshua and all Israel let themselves be driven back before them and they fled toward the desert. All the men of Ai were called to pursue all, pursue them and they pursued Joshua and were lured away from the city. Not a man remained in Ai in, or better who did not go after Israel. Not a man remained. I will hear somebody. They left the city open and went in pursuit of Israel. Some of us are pursuing one thing. All you're doing, all you're pursuing one relationship. And you forget every other thing. Forgotten what your parents are saying. You've forgotten people behind you. You've forgotten people that have been there for you. You just want to make money. Oh, I'm, I'm working over time. Every day over time. Somebody, no time to study, no time to, to make to, to, to make calls, no time to reach out to your loved one. You keep pursuing one thing, and that is why we are getting it wrong. And that is one of the reasons many people are losing out because they one day are pursuing one little thing that they think that matters to them most, they will forget every other thing. The only thing you should pursue without looking back is the word of God, is the work of God, is the things of God, is God himself. Every other things will expire. You've got to understand, even you yourself will expire. Am I talking to somebody? The other day I just looked at the mirror, I saw a wrinkle on my face. I said, what a, what, 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 what a moment. I said, what a moment. I, was, I, was, I said, what a moment. I thought I'm young. I'm not getting old. <laughs> I refuse to agree. I don't know about you. I say I refuse. <laughs> but it's reality. So this, your body, this morning I put on cream, but this body one day will expire, but not now. So every other thing will pass away. The only thing that matters is your relationship with the King of King and the Lord of Lords. If you miss it today, you will miss it tomorrow. Because you will not be there when he comes. So you look at that. They left the city open and went in pursuit of Israel. Because in their thinking, they just want to get at their enemy. 
Oh, you are again, you are very bitter because of that. Your bitterness, you keep fighting your enemy, chasing after your enemy, refuse to forgive, refuse to let go, refuse to pray, refuse to read the Bible. You just want to get at your enemy. You're saying, God, just give me some time. Once I kill her, I will come back to you. When you do that, be ready to be conquered. I will hear somebody. Verse 20 to 23. In verse 20 to 23, when the men of Ai looked behind them, smoke from the town was filling the sky and they had nowhere to go. Remember, he, he took all his men out of the city. For the Israelite who had fled in the direction of the wilderness, now turn on their pursuers. Keep going. When Joshua and all the other Israelites saw that the ambush had succeeded and the smoke was rising from the town, the town, and attacked the men of Ai. Amen, somebody. They turned and attacked the men of Ai. Keep going. Meanwhile, the Israelite who were in who were inside the town, came out and attacked the enemy from the rear. So the men of Ai were caught in the middle. Many of us today are caught in the middle because we are not strategic in our thinking and in our planning. And we hear somebody. With, with Israelite fighters on both sides, Israel attacked them and not a single person survived or escaped because of poor planning. Poor strategy. Wow. Alone, only the king of Ai was taken alive and brought to Joshua. So anytime you are planning poorly, be sure to be caught, you know, in the middle. Be sure to lose. So as a, a, a person, as a child of God, as a, a believer, as a leader, you've got to always ask God to sharpen your mind. Dr. Mike Murdoch said, he said that the greatest gift that God has given him is his mind. He said if you give him his mind and his parents, he's going to choose his mind. Does that sound like heresy? I repeat again, if, he said if you give him his mind and give him his parents, so he will choose his mind. Does that make sense? You're quiet on me, somebody. He <laughs> said because if he loses his mind, he can't be able to take care of his parents. He said the only way he can be able to truly honor his parents and take care of them and provide for them is for him to have his mind entitled, to have upgraded mind. Sometimes we, some people used to say believers leave their mind out of the church. Even though we are the most informed people. Every Sunday, we are empowered with the world, with revelational world, revelational knowledge. And some of your workmates are there in the club. They, they dance all through yesterday night. Once this weekend, they are going to Queen Street to dance. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> oh, pee, pee. <laughs> and they will drink their life out. Hello, someone. And, and then when you, you that receive power, receive flame, receive grace of God, you that was under the mantle on Sunday, then you go to work and these same people are oppressing you. Why? You should be in control. You should be the one influencing your atmosphere, influencing your workplace because you have revelation. If we're not using what we know, then what is the need of being a child of God? We serve the, the, the greatest king, the one that knows all. And, and that the Bible says, as he is in this world, so are we. So you're not, you're not different from your master. A snake gives birth to a snake. Unless somebody, chicken, give birth to chicken. God has given birth to us. So you've got to understand that we have his nature. We have his spirit. We have love in us. Hello, somebody. We have grace. We have power. We have care and spirit. Everything that God has is not for him, it's for us. So you can't be walking defeated. You can't be making decisions as though you don't read the Bible. Are we here, somebody? 
You cannot be doing some things that is not incommensurate or that does not commensurate the wisdom or the wisdom word you receive from week to week. If there is anyone that should rule this nation, it should be the church. The mantle to rule, the mantle to lead is actually on the church of Jesus Christ. The other day my soul was grieved. I was told, you know, this is Lord help us. I speak in tongues. You know the one that was deputy to our lady that just, right? Deputy to the former government. So the other day he resigned from parliament. And he said something. He's going to Otago University now. Some of you know who I'm talking about, right? Do you know what I'm talking? Yes. Don't look at me like that. Yeah. So, and he said, even though we know that he, is, he belonged to the other side, he looked at a man and said, and I want to thank my husband. Did you get what I mean? He looked at the man. He said he also want to thank the husband for helping him. I, <laughs> a knowledgeable man, fully empowered, academically empowered, politically, politically knowledge, knowledgeable, financially knowledgeable. A man that understands how the world runs does not understand that a man cannot be your husband. How does that work? And now he's going to be chancellor to Otago University. And when I read that, I said, Lord, I, I folded somebody, one of our members here at the picture. I said, look, I said, we have young people in Otago. And now they would think, by the way, he was a deputy prime minister. He was a financial, you know, um, minister. This man, it doesn't matter what he's doing. He's still prospering. That is how the world think. You're going, he, the enemy have planned that position for him to influence the whole entire, you know, uh, uh, university. And this is what is happening today. Where are the church? Lord somebody, if there is anybody that ought to be in a, in a good position in this country, it should be the church. We should, be, we should not be the one on the receiving side. We don't have to be begging. We have to be in politics. We have to be in entertainment. In, in, in every aspect in this nation, we have to dream. I keep telling our young people, I want them to participate in politics. Sometimes, have you even find that, discover that the devil, I'm leaving some of my, God help me. The devil is sending the watch the force to the parliament. People without solid morals. Because the enemy wants them to pollute and contaminate the, young, the, the, the coming generation. 50 years from now, tell me where this country will be. The man of God is talking about how the church in New Zealand, not just in New Zealand, in the Western world, how the church is in trouble. Sometimes it's hard to pastor in the Western world. Amen. People don't take Christianity serious. For them, it's like it doesn't exist. And one of the reasons the church is not manifesting the power of God. And that is what the, the greatest weakness of the church in New Zealand is because of lack of power. Tell me, how many times have you seen most of the politicians during election going to Pentecostal churches, wooing their pastors you know, to support them? Zero. But they go to Hindu guys. Have you seen that? They go to Hindu temple. How many times have you seen New Zealand, most of them campaigning for, for, for higher elective polls, going to the church to vote for vote? Because they know that we don't even, we don't know what we're doing. Who are the ones voting in all the liberal politicians? The person that introduced this, this legislation that, that is ravaging the country spiritual without us even knowing today, it is, it's from Man Manurewa Electorate, Louisa Wall, and who voted her. Most people in South Auckland are more, uh, more spiritual. Unless somebody, they are religious, yet they voted her. And what is going to happen to this nation many years from now? Because the good people are not willing to do something. Hello, somebody. That is why we must not just do church. After this conference, you go back and stay the same, do things the same. No. You've got to say, Lord, what is it that you're telling me in this conference? What is it that you're giving to me? 
Father, give me light. I want to go after these three days. I don't want to go back the same. Open my eye to what I do not know. Tell me what to do with my life. The Lord needs to open your eyes. And if you're here today, I pray for the enlightenment of your eyes. May the Lord enlighten your spirit. In the name of Jesus. We will not go back the same. Hello somebody? Say, I will not go back the same. Your city will always be prone to what? Plunder. Your city will be prone to plunder by outsiders. If your leaders lack the right or the 21st century strategy to protect it from the enemy, you the leader must always think strategically. You must not be a foolish thinker. And everyone here is a leader. If you see men that are ruling the world today, they are, look at Elon Musk, quite liberal, liberal in his thinking, always um, a, a bit, um, I'm looking for a better word, I'm not condemning him, but you, you know that is, um, oh, this, this English word has run out of my, my, my brain, I'm looking for a word that fits his nature, it's always, you know, it, well, anytime you say something, people capture it. But this guy, we, don't, we, we know he doesn't go to church because he could, let's say, liberal thinking. Let somebody, but they are the one, are they? Everybody knows he's a smart guy. He said, when he talk of smart, he's smart. But so this guy is, is doing business that is changing the world, have his own satellite right now. Apart from his Tesla and our motor company, nations are even trying to use his satellite. People that rule this world are highly strategic in their thinking. They don't think poor. If you want to go far, you've, you've got to ask God to upgrade your mind. Mind upgrade is a necessity. And one of the reasons you have problems and clash with so many people out there is because they are not thinking, especially in the church. When people do not have revelation, they will attack some of your views. And sometimes they don't even allow themselves to grow. There are things you may not know today, but you will know tomorrow. Unless somebody, from time to time, you need to ask God. There are things you may not even agree. I may be doing it. For you, it is strange. But don't complain yet. Until when you get there, God will explain something to you in the next two, three, four, or five years. We respond to issues according to our thinking and our maturity. So once your maturity is poor, you, there is a tendency of thinking that your neighbor is doing something wrong because of the way you are thinking. And sometimes you can walk away come blaming every other person, not knowing that the problem is lying with you. Some of the problems we see in the world today begins from us. All these men that are ravaging the world, who raised them? They were raised by a mother. They were raised by a, 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 a father. I, when I think of Putin, I'm thinking, how, how will you sleep as a leader when you, from time to time you release bomb and you hear that this family died, these children died? How, how do you feel? But who raised them? Let's somebody. If you, you take knife and go and cut people's head, who raised such people? Who raised such monsters? They were raised in a family. And in most cases, those families that raised them, probably do not have spiritual impute in them. And that is why we must do our best. Your work with God is beyond you. It's not about you. It's about this generation that are hurting. This generation that is in pain. We have a confused you know, generation. A generation that has been, been afflicted with all sorts of things. Our young people are under enormous pressure. They don't even know what to do with their life. And it's not because they don't want to do something. They are confused. And who is going to project the life of God in them if, if we are not the one? You see, you've got to be so kingdom minded that you're thinking of so, so, so. How do I change people's life? Invest time in people. Allow somebody when you look at people and, and discover that they have strategic destiny, you've got to, you know, sometimes they even disregard you. Don't mind. You know what you are looking for. 
You know what you are targeting. You are targeting something that God has invested in them. And you know that in, 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 if, if Christ not taken, they will be one of the you know, greatest voice in this nation. I love somebody. In New Zealand today, thank God that God is raising people at this time. We thank God for our, our pastor here, Evangelist Joseph, and many more I'm sure God is raising in this country. But tell me, a known evangelist in this country right now, where are they? A known healing minister, where are they? Hello, somebody. A church that is imparting political landscape. And where are they? We are all silent. And I believe God is looking for a generation that will stand up and say enough is enough. <laughs> a generation that is ready to pray. God is looking for intercessors. Do you know that one intercessor, a great intercessor, is more, than, is more valuable in the eyes of God than 10,000 pastors. A man that can intercede for a nation, stand, you know, put in his prophetic mantle and say, Father, this thing must change. How many of us are praying beyond this realm? Beyond give me milk, give me biscuits, give me chicken. There is more to life. I am not satisfied. I am crying every day. I am hungry. I am not satisfied. I thank God for what he is doing in New Zealand. But I feel that this thing is still below my capacity. Hello somebody. I say it in humility. So many times I cry at Lord. I'm not feeling fulfilled yet. There is more to be done. You have to donate your life. You have to be a strategic thinker. You've got to be a strategic leader. A strategic relationship maker. A strategic church member. Somebody that is always positioning. Omaha Zebaha Sakayaba. You are always positioning yourself to be used by God. You are not a weakling Christian. We are not pushing you to come to the house of God. We are not pampering you to give to God. Many of you don't give. Even when we talk of tithe, Christians are fighting to tithe. But you don't fight with the government. How will a child of God, if you, okay, don't give God tithe. But can you be giving more than a tithe? Don't call it tithe so that the kingdom of God can be run. We have a crusade, you know, a meeting coming up in Fiji in May. And because of the bill, I was just telling her already, maybe I'm thinking whether to cancel it. But because of what the man of God said today, I feel, no, I'm not going to cancel it. Uh, I was already thinking because when we're looking at, I told her, you'll get, you know, let's get, let me have the information. The other day she sent all the information. I said, this is too much. Can we really do it? But what are we making money for? Anytime I said to my wife, I said, oh, money, because of my sister, don't worry. I will sponsor you. I'll be your first sponsor. <laughs> she always said. How will you be struggling to give to the work of God? This is called Breakthrough Conference. And we've been praying and waiting in his presence. Do you think that after this conference, something will not shift in your life? No. So this is, this is the place to sow. A wise man is a man who knows where God is investing and does the same. Not you get your tithe, then you give $50. If everyone in this church is giving, we don't even need to ask you to give us money for conference. How much do we get on Sunday? If I tell you, you'll be shocked. You'll be wondering, where are the, why are you making money? Why are we alive? To buy clothes, eat food, is it not shameful that you are alive to buy clothes, eat food, and just have shelter? It's more than that. It's about kingdom investments. I believe that there are angels of God in this meeting. And they come with notes. Everything the men of God have shared today, it's been recorded. And they will submit it to the Lord. This is what your servant preached. This is how your people received it. This church is serious. The other church is not. Spiritual realm is as real as your air. So let's get serious. This nation is in trouble. I can assure you now. 
New Zealand and beyond New Zealand, Western world. Christianity is dying. You guys need to know it. Christianity is dying in New Zealand. Go to the street there. I, there, was, there was a time I used to go to the street every day. I've met you know, disgruntled people. People that are, you know, they always, oh, the church people are mean. Church people are mean. If you really watch it, they are the mean ones. Or they were immature. They, they were not willing to be raised, to be trained, to be empowered. You go to work and sometimes you get rebuked. Yet you, the next morning you are there. But right in the church, we walk away. How will God not discipline you? This scripture came to my mind. Is it chief, um, Hebrew chief, chief verse 9? Where the Bible says, God, he say, he's, the, he's the father of your spirit. Check it. Is it he's, since we respect our earthly fathers who discipline us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirits and live forever? To the discipline of the father of our spirit. Once you're not listening to the discipline of the Lord, then another person, another thing is your father. So the church must rise. We must be strategic. Think strategic. Think beyond even your, your, what you have. Think beyond your, your pocket. Oh, we don't have money. We can't do it. If we are thinking of money, we can't even do this conference. We just need to do what we can. You see how the man of God stepped out. And God honored his step. He said he first went to Samoa for four times, for about four times, before he got invited. He invited himself. And I told my wife, I said, this is what God told me 2009. That was when I went to India, to, um, to Philippines, to Korea. You know, we raised about 30000 at the time and put it into, the, into that meeting. Some of us, if you raise such a man, you use it for yourself. I raise it and use it. We also put our own. Just because we want our fed souls. I can remember in Philippines, this boy was crying uncontrollably. I said to him, what is the problem? He said, I don't, he said, I don't know what is happening in my body. He said, my body is changing. My body is changing. Pray for me. You know what I'm talking about. He's a man, a boy. But it's, it's, something is telling him that he's a, he's a woman now. And you know that he doesn't want you that. He doesn't want that to happen to his body. He doesn't want to respond to that. But he was under compelling presence. This boy was broken. He was broken. I have a Filipino daughter. Hello, I, I adopted in 2009. From time to time, I sent her money. Hello, somebody. Juliet. She, I, I spotted her when I called for soul for people to come and receive Jesus Christ. She was crying and crying and crying. And the Spirit of God said to me, she doesn't have father. She doesn't have a physical father. I, I, I told her, bring, they bring her up. I said, do you have a father? She said, no, my father died. And they took away her father in a very contro controversial manner. I said, okay, I adopt you as a daughter. That was how I adopted her. And when there because some other people give to do that program. You must live beyond your little things around you. Think kingdom. Think as long as you're thinking kingdom. The, the devil can take you like that. God do not have too many faithful men. And we hear somebody. You need to know that God does not have too many faithful people out there. If you are faithful, he's going to preserve your life. So that you can do his work. Faithful men are few. So once, do, do you think I want to lose any faithful member? Are you tired, somebody? I don't want to lose a faithful member. Because I know what that person contributes in the kingdom. God does not want to lose you. Are we here, somebody? You've got to understand that. A little bit. Now, a strategy comes for balance. You must be balanced in your planning. And why doing so, you must not leave those that matter behind. Moses and Joshua selected leading men from various tribes in order to actualize their plans and to avoid murmurings among the leading men. That, that is what strategy. If you look at the book of Joshua, chapter 11, 
chapter 3, 11 to 12. Please quickly, let me show you. Joshua chapter 3, 11 to 12. God said to Joshua, he said, look, the act of the covenant which belongs to the Lord of the whole act. We lead you, we lead you across the Jordan River. Wow. The act will lead you, not you leading the act. You need the presence to lead you. He said, now choose 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. Why was God interested in each tribe? Why was he so interested that you must choose 12 men? And that is why I say leader, sometimes you can't just do it because, well, I don't care. God wanted to make sure that everyone is carried along. That is, why, that is why from time to time, we try to ask you to do something, try to carry along. Even when you show us attitude, we still endure it. And let's remember that we still want you to feel belonging, to be part of what we are doing. Because if we start following your attitude, it will not be long you will run. Or you will fall away and say, nobody cares about me. Nobody cares about me. But you are the one that does not care about anybody. So we decided, it's okay, because you don't care. So let's just do our own thing. And then you get more angrier. I will hear somebody. So you, you yourself need to change your attitude. Change the way you do things. Change the way you think. Become a fresh person. A new man. That's the man that is, that is, is called new man. Have you heard that? New man. When anyone is in Christ, behold, he's a new creation. I pray he's new in his spirit. But we have to be new. Don't come to church and you're so strong. The sermon doesn't move you. You don't respect anybody. Hello, somebody. You cannot do that in the Queen's Palace. You can't go to Buckingham Palace. And then you just behave respectfully. When royals are doing something, you are told how to dress. You are told how to behave. They will teach you etiquette. Let somebody to make sure you don't even misstep. The kingdom should do better. Why are we the most indisciplined people? Do you even know that Catholic, you know, church is more organized? Let somebody, they are more disciplined than we the feed that we are speaking in tongues. Oh, I have one written revelation. I know what the Bible is saying. We start running with, you know, imbalanced revelation. A revelation that is not balanced. Unbalanced revelation. See, see, Pope. The Pope is in Italy. But yet have so much influence around the world. Over all the Catholics around the world. In my country, they are growing. They don't do evangelism. Have you seen anybody, anybody in the road? They say we are Catholics. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Yet they still have members. Even though some, are, some of their churches are dying. But they still, if you go to Africa, they have members. Even though they are under still full competition with Pentecostal churches. But they still have members. Because they are organized. Hello, somebody. Have you ever told, how would Pope have so much influence in Latin America, South America, Africa, anywhere? The Catholic have so much influence. Yet they are not even going to the streets and say, come to Catholic. They don't do that. How are they have a member? See how we are struggling to, we speak in tongues, we, we pray for healing, people have the feeling, the infilling of the Holy Ghost, manifestations happen, yet we are still struggling. What is it that intrinsic wrong? What is it that is wrong in our approach in dealing with God? Any company that is not organized cannot prosper. And some of you are not even in discipline at your workplace. You behave well. In the church, there should be such an etiquette. Let's remember Moral etiquette. Emotional etiquette. That's what politicians call emotional intelligence. Let's remember If we carry ourselves well before God, I believe God is still looking for a church, for a family, for a person in this nation to bless. Amen. The such light of the Holy Ghost is hovering in New Zealand. Let somebody looking for a church that is ready to carry the mantle to the nations. I'm telling you because most of the Western nations are dying. I don't know another person. I thought I was the only one that feels like that all the time. I was touched when Pastor Joseph was saying the same thing. And I know he was real about it. 
what is going to be our own contribution? We must be strategic. You can say to Lord, I'm going to give you one soul. We don't, you don't need to do two souls. Say, neighbor, you don't need to do two. You say, God, I can give you one soul this year. Just one. That can, you start reaching out to somebody. Keep speaking to somebody. Somebody says it takes up to 300, talking to people up to 300 times for them to start thinking of God. Don't think it's it come to church. The, the devil, even you that is in the church is struggling with your own flesh. <laughs> Don't think they want to leave their beers, their club, amen, their immoralities and so many things. Who, do you think they want to leave it? It's not easy for people to quit the past. So you must be persuasive through the power of God. We must be strategic. We must be intentional. That is how to build a church. How many of us have reached out to souls in the last one month? When I, 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 was, I became born again, I was crazy for God. I was crazy. The hunger, the hunger, the passion to reach out to people. Once it is God, I'm there. But today we don't have that hunger anymore. I think one of the problems is because of, 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 of comfort and affluence. We are too comfortable. And that is why people are not hungry for healing in Western church because they have their GP. You may have the anointing in the West here, but the anointing sometimes doesn't move. I'm telling you, and you keep asking, asking yourself, why? Why is it that it's not moving to its potential? The reason is because the people are not passionate. It takes two to tango. Hello, somebody. If no matter how much I prayed and come to this conference, if you, if, if you say in your heart, I'm not going to receive anything he's saying today, you come and sit like this. Even if, unless God and his mercies chooses to encounter you, nothing is going to flow. Let's remember it. When God anoints a man of God, there's anointing that preserves you as a, a minister. But there's, the most of the anointing on your life is for the people. So anytime you're ministering, there's a basket, spiritual basket you carry. And there you have wet, you have healing, you have you know, love. Everything anyone is looking for, they can tap from it. But it all depends on how much they want to receive. Sometimes a pastor will close service and you feel so much f fresh fire on you. You realize you still have so much to give. And you're wondering, but we just did service. Because the people did not pull as much as they needed to pull. So you go home with that flame. Sometimes it rest, it will rest on you for 24 hours. Sometimes more than that. Sometimes just for seven hours. Depending on, depending on what came on you during the service. You carry something. Even on Monday, you could see lightning and flames all over you. You know you've not fully discharged. I was the time I went to Fiji. We saw so many, a you know, lot of miracles in that meeting. I came home with so much cloud I've never experienced in my life before. God is my witness. I would be on the table eating. It's like, you know, when it becomes a, a disturbance to me. It was all over the place. You know, there's light all over the place and all over my body. I became uncomfortable. I told my wife, I'm uncomfortable now. One day I heard Benny Him said, God released so much on his life until he said, God, I don't need again. I don't need again. I was thinking, how can you say you don't need again? I'm just asking God to, bless, to anoint me. And you, you are saying you don't need again. Do you know the anointing is like a voltage? Sometimes it can destroy. Especially if you carry it in, a, in, in, a, in, a, in impurity. And if you don't have a pure heart. Then the same anointing that he is can destroy people. If you are not consecrated, don't ask for so much fire because that fire can become a problem. Once, once it comes to your life, it can even, some people have gone mad. I've seen a guy, I know the guy, that went almost mental because certain volume of grace came on him. But his level of consecration was not to the dimension of the grace that came on his life. I wish to hear. So we need to be what? Very, very strategic. We see God saying, choose what 12 men from the 12 tribe. Why was God interested 
for men, for each person, for one person from the twelve tribe. For him to choose one person from the twelve tribe. Why was, why was God interested? Because God was looking for balance in the body. And that is why as a leader, you must not be partial. You must be impartial at all times. But sometimes, leaders tend to draw, navigate. You know, they tend to draw towards people that are willing to carry the mantle they have to the nations. And so it's not because the leader loves that person more. It's just that the other person is available. Leaders tend to draw closer to available people. They naturally gravitate towards people that are available. And anybody can be connected. I wish to hear somebody. Am I wasting your time? Let me tell you now. The truth, that is the truth of the matter. I'm the chief servant here. But if I'm not, anywhere I go, no one will be more closer. I'm not campaigning. I'm not, let, me, let me say this. Please don't take it neg- neg- negatively. No one will be more closer to the pastor than I do. None. I'm not saying pastor is anything. Okay? I'm not trying to elevate anybody above you. But anywhere I go, especially in the ministry, I'm not going because I'm looking for the pastor's, pastor's favor. But, but, but my service will draw me closer. You need to serve. Service is the way out. There is no way God can bless a man that is not willing to serve. Unless you're looking for sat- satanic promotion. If you want God to promote you, you've got to make up your mind not to be a visitor in the body, in the house of God. To become somebody that is donating your life at all times. In book of Numbers, the same thing, number 13, 1 to 3, God urged Moses. He said to Moses, you must, you know, choose seven. The Lord now, the Lord now said to Moses, a bit fast. He said, send out men to exploit the land of Canaan, the land I am giving to the Israelites. Send one leader from each of the tribe, each of the 12 ancestral tribes. God was seeking for balance. Children of God, we must be balanced in our thinking, balanced in our relationship, balanced in the way we administrate, in the way you lead in your department, because people are watching. Now, never you think you are smarter than your neighbor sometimes. Your neighbor knows what you know. Unless somebody, people, even the ones you think that are foolish, knows what you know to some extent. So, treat people well. Care for them. Get to know as a leader. Make sure that you carry everybody along in as much as you cannot always please everybody. But you've got to prove yourself worthy of the calling of God on your life. Hello, somebody. This instance should serve as a warning to, particular, to particularly third world leaders who are given to practice of extreme nepotism where the brightest are not always given deserving opportunity. Rather, to unqualify, are given first consideration because they are connected to those in authority. The God is calling us to a place of balance where you, you don't help people because they are more connected to you. As a leader, you've got to have a large heart. By the mercies of God, one of my quality is large heart. Hello, somebody. And if you're close to me, if you're in this, kind, in this, in this uh, church for some time, you will know that I have a large heart. As a father, you need to have a large heart. As a member, you need to have a large heart. Even have a large heart to be able to accept the mistake of people. One man of God says, whenever they are budgeting, if they want to spend 100 million in a year, he make a budget of 130 million because he believed there are churches in the village here and there that would need their help. There are churches that were not opportune to be planted in the city. And there are pastors that are languishing in the village. For they are the heroes in the body of Christ. So this, the church in the city must look after them. And that is why from time to time, we reach out to people who do not have what we have. We hear some, somebody. So don't be somebody that have this nepotism mindset. We see a lot of that in third world nation. We see a lot of, in my country, Nigeria, have one of the brightest people on earth today. You can research it. 
But the people that are leading the country, it has been, the, it's like that. It's a, a demonic strategy to destroy the young generation. They have not allowed the young people to rise up and take over political landscape. The one that is trying to impose their poor mindset is the people that have been there for a very, the antiquate leaders. They've been there for a very long time. You, where you have bright people. In the United States, Nigerians are one of the most, you know, academically, one of the most educated ethnic group in the United States. But yet the people that are leading us have question mark and the country is going through so much. I wish to hear somebody. Now, strategic leaders have foresight. The mark of a strategic leader is foresight. Having foreknowledge of things around you will help you in strategizing for the future. You have to have foreknowledge of things around you. Now, let's remember it. Don't, don't, don't care less. Ask God to give you, you know, you know, wisdom to be able to perceive things before they happen. To be able to even know people that are, you know, there are people that are laughing with you, but they are not with you. As a leader, you've got to know. Once people, as I'm leading, once people start dishonoring you, if you're a leader, if you have five children, and you see one, they keep dishonoring you, you've seen where the enemy is going to attack that family from, unless you pray for such a person. So, one of the ways of knowing that a person will not last in a church is to see the way they honor. Once I see your dishonor, as a minister here, I see you keep dishonoring me. I will not say anything, by the way, but I, I, I'm, I, one, somehow I will start preparing for your exit. Uh, <coughs> I, wish, I will tell my wife, I'm already preparing for your exit. I know it's a question of time. You will exit. And sometimes when they see it, they don't even do much. You see, the devil keep taking them around, along, around. So one of the ways God wants you to become, I, I always say, I'm detouring here and there. Sometimes the Holy Spirit wants it that way. That if you understand the place of honor, if you understand the place of honor, you've understood 95% of life requirements. I wish to hear some of you are too quiet on me. Okay, you don't like this. Let's close. Can we go? <laughs> Once you understand the place of honor, you've understood 95% of life requirements. Why was devil cast down? He was cast down. Lucifer cast down from what? Heaven. What sin did he commit? The sin of dishonor. Hello, somebody. Anywhere you go in this nation today, you will see dishonor. Anywhere you turn to, you will see dishonor. Especially in Western world. And that is one of the reasons we are having problems seeing the power of God manifest. Any church where there is no honor, you will not see the power of God. No matter how much the pastor is anointed. No matter the anointing on the pastor. I wish to hear if any time you see more move of God in this church, it, it also means that the, our honor level has upgraded. The way you honor God and the way you honor man. Who doesn't deserve and desire honor? Even your children. A two years old baby knows when you dishonor him or her. So people know if you're honorable. People know if you're not honorable. There are people, it's their life, it's their culture. They know how to honor. One lady said, I don't know why I keep deterring Lord. One lady said that for years, he, people will, will be testifying of how God is using the husband. And sometimes she'll become jealous. How the husband pray for them. They catch the fire. Their life change. The mantle of ministry comes on them. And she started asking her, said, but this is my husband. Why is it not happening to me? One day she said she came to church. The husband was praying for people. She came out. She cried and cried and cried. And then she went home and took a seed. And she saw on, you know, to the husband. He, he, she gave him a seed and said, from today, I don't want to see you just as my husband. I see you as my spiritual father, as my pastor. I want what is on you to be on me. Some of you know that lady. This, some, 
Is it Maribel? What, what did he call that? Midred. Midred is more popular now than the husband. Some of you may not even remember the husband's name. But all of a sudden, God skyrocketed Midred. And she's all over the world. She said it was at that time that she tapped into that thing that was on her, on her husband. And now she's leading the flag. Oh, no. Let's remember this. It's the way to the top. Everybody longs for honor. Nobody wants to be dishonored. Sometimes your bosses may even suck you that is skillful and keep somebody who honors them. Even though that person is no more skillful than you. Who wants to work with a rebellious person? You know somebody with somebody that is highly delicate. So God's people, we know better. I haven't touched what I'm, where I'm going, but I'm going to stop soon and we will pray. Please be, be ready to pray. The way you're looking right now, I'm not sure if you're, <laughs> you're looking tired. I understand. <laughs> hey, somebody. I said the making of what strategic leader is what? Foresight, right? We, wise leaders are very skillful in implementing God-given strategy. Joshua, Moses, we are very skillful or clever in the discharge of their duty. Amen. Adventure without strategy is bound to fail. It may be adventurous, but if you don't have strategy, to be ready to fail. You must invent strategy, plan for the purpose of securing the future. Always think of how to secure your future. The future is always owned by people who are proficient or adapt in planning. When we started this church, we had, um, at the time we didn't have money to pay, where well, we were renting. So I was thinking, what will I do now, Lord? I said, if I take this, if, this if, if, if we go back home to my house and start doing all that, then people will laugh at me. And, some, and somehow I thought, um, but what, does it even matter? It's, this is about me and God. I told them, I said, okay, we're going to move the Bible study, even the choir practice. So we move it to my house. Bible study to my house. Hello, somebody. And on, uh, sometime we went to another house, we went to the house of another brother. So we were doing it like that. But how do I, I read a book. If you are, if you want to pioneer something, I beg of you to read Against All Odds. Written by R Rory Ellick, the guy that are pioneering God's channel. If you want to pioneer anything, I beg beg of you, buy the book Against Our Odd. It will change your life. It will revolutionize your life. I will hear somebody. So we, we were there doing, I didn't even, at the time I didn't care about what people, God stripped me of, of my self pride. At the time I wasn't thinking of what anybody says. From time to time, God will stripe you of your pride. God will deal with you and deal with you until you have nothing to protect. Many of you that are quite protective, get ready for challenges. Oh, that's too hard. Protecting, oh, you know, allow God to protect your integrity. But there are some of you that don't want to step out of your comfort zone because of my integrity, my integrity. If the name of God is, is at stake and your name is at stake, whose name will you defend? Many of us are not willing to defend the name of the Lord. You're not willing to go extra mile for God. It's always about me, 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 me thing. You're not here for just you, you. Do something for God. No. Give beyond sometimes your strength. In this conference, we have given something. Hello, somebody. If you want, I can mention it better. But for the sake of madam, she didn't ask me to mention it. We, we have given something. I'm pastoring, but I, I, as you're registering, we have also registered. In fact, I forgot. I, I came here, I said, oh, I know my wife normally do that. Let me go and ask if she have done it, if she paid for me. When I go there to pay, they said, she paid for me. I want to make sure. When, let me say this again. Some of this is I'm saying, I didn't plan it. Please I'll be patient with me. One thing anyone cannot, if anyone ever accuse me, of financial promiscuity, the person will die. That's too hard. <laughs> Dying may not be physical death. A lot of people, a lot of people today have certain arrows in their life because of the things they say. Most men of God, you see, have sacrificed everything. 
They have given so much. They are men, they will not take one cent. Once I said to my wife, make sure that when you are doing things for church, make sure you don't allow the church cent to enter into our pocket so that when we swell, we will, be, we will survive it. One thing, if God come today, if all that people need to make heaven is how they manage church money, I will make heaven. If it go to that heaven, I'm not there. That heaven is not complete. <laughs> I'm telling you, if, if, <laughs> if, if what people need to go to heaven, I'm saying before God that I'm, to make heaven is because of how they manage church money. If that heaven come, I will be the first to be there. And if you, if you go to that heaven, you didn't see me, you are in the wrong heaven. Because I'm sure, I know, by the message of God, we know how we deal with the church finances. And so somebody will be there, when you have shoes, oh, you have clothes, oh. They don't even know there was a time you don't have known. When they buy your house, the pastor celebrates you. <clears throat> you buy a car, the pastor is jumping. Oh, there are, our people are, are prospering. You, you, you get a job, the pastor is so happy. But when the pastor gets anything, say, who knows? Ah. Uh, all these pastors these days, they are looking at people's pockets. How can I serve a living God and then he will not bless me? And who told church people that God have to take permission from you to bless your pastor? You will not even listen to a pastor that looks haggard and, and tired. A pastor that looks like his God is not alive. The world we live in, they are watching you. God is good. Good as, you, as you're looking. How will God be good in this? The, you know, when you look at some people, they say God is good. You just wonder. That is why even when you go to the street to, to preach, dress well. Don't dress haggard. Dress well. Brush well. Come well. Because the people, you are presenting a king. You're telling people about God, about this package that they do not know about. Why do I, why would I go to represent him? The other day I saw somebody in evangelism, you know, I saw a, a, a clip the person sent. He was in the street doing evangelism. The first thing I saw was the legs. He, he wore Sunday, but if you look at that leg, because of the, the video, it, it looks so bad. And I, I paused, I said, when the people look at him there, they will not believe in that God. And that is why God is obligated in blessing his servants. But he doesn't start with blessing. He, he takes you through rough road, through water, you know, through fire and high waters. David said, I've gone through fire and through water. He said, but at the end, the Lord has brought me to my worthy place. There is a place called the worthy place. And that is where, where God is bringing us. I said, that is where God is bringing us. <laughs> we are coming to, the, to his worthy place. Psalm 62, 66 verse 12. If you read that, verse, that scripture. He said, I have gone through fire. If you are a minister, you have not gone through fire. You have not started. If you are serving God, you've not gone through fire. You've not started. That is what will qualify you from what? Accessing his way, the place. If you've gone through so much abuse, insulted, humiliated. You know somebody? Then get ready. If you are faithful and things have gone wrong. Get ready for a shift in your life. Many of you today are coming into a realm you are not even believing God for. There are some of us here, you are coming to a realm. I can assure you now, hear me again. This is a prophetic word. God is going to bring you into a realm you have not dreamed of. The man of God said he had only one thousand. But with 1,000, within six months, he was able to do so much with 1,000. And by, because he obeyed God in the air, a woman said, who are you? He said, oh, I'm a businessman, but I'm also an evangelist. So can you come to some more? God opened that door. I love when God opened doors for me. Can I talk to somebody that God is about to open doors for you in the name of Jesus? There are doors of greatness, doors.
doors of faith, doors of mercy, doors of lifting. God is about to open unto you. You've got to get trained before these things begin to happen. I said to my wife the other day, I said, I said, I said, Jale, you've got to know that God cannot give us more than what we have. He cannot give us members or, or flame or grace or glory beyond our maturity. Because as the amount of money God will put in your hand, you will not be in this church today. You'll be from Hong Kong to Singapore to New York to Chile. Tell us somebody saying, baby, you know, I had a good time. I had a good time in that boat. I had a good time in the air. You will never be in the house of God. Said is somebody come back to the house because God is waiting for you. The man of God gave so much that God can be able to say. So when he says, I trust God every day. I was listening carefully. It means, it seemed to me, all he does is ministry. And so they believe God for everything and God is blessing them. He didn't plan to be here. He didn't wake up and say, I want to be. He doesn't even know maybe we're existing. But all of a sudden, why is it that while I, where I was on my knees, God said, call him. When you serve God, he will remember you. I said, he will remember you. Many of you here are the target of heaven. Heaven is, you are the one, they are discussing, oh my, my, my. I said they are discussing about you right now. There is a discussion in heaven and that discussion is about you. A meeting has been called. I'm giving you a prophetic word. A meeting has been called for somebody in this place. Am I talking to somebody? Heaven is thinking of how to prosper you. How to heal you. How to empower you. Had to move you to another realm of glory and power. Am I still talking to somebody? There is somebody in this place. Jesus is talking about you. He's discussing you with the Father. I hear God saying, remember her because this is the time to show her mercy. This is her appointed time. God is bringing you to your worthy place. Can I, can I talk to somebody and say, this is my worthy place season. Help me talk to your neighbor. Can I say, neighbor, it is your worthy place. It is your worthy place. You have come into your worthy place. I've gone through water and through fire. But the good news is at the last. Can you use KJV? At the last, the Lord has brought me, KJV, to my worthy place. So it does not matter what I'm going through today. I am looking toward the mark of the high calling. God is trying to bless you. God is going to bless me. In fact, these are the season of worthy place. Season of abundance. In this meeting, grace is released. Favor is released. Special mantle is released. Mantle that will take you to the next 10 years. Receive yours now. Receive yours now. Receive yours now. Read with me. That has caused men to write over our heads. Who? Men. Not wood. Not trees. Not stick. So certain people that are riding over your heads are under assignment from God. I can tell you they are there to bring you to your wedding place. <laughs> I didn't learn how to pray in Bible school. I learned how to pray when people walk out of my life. When people betrayed me. When they hurt me. I went on my knee. I said, God, don't let me fail. If I fail, they will believe that they are right in what they are thinking. There was a time I did 40 days fasting, only fruit once in a day. Fruit once in a day. I take fruit in the evening for 40 days. It was when people broke my heart. Many times I've gone into long journey with God. It's when I'm going through stuff. And then I see God doing a new thing and trying to recover myself. God taught me a new way. 
a new pattern. I am I'm here tonight to you. Your season to come into this realm of favor, realm of blessing, realm of glory is here right now. Can I talk to you? That your season have come. Man of God, come, 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 somebody, somebody, yeah, mama. come, 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 say, say, my season come, my season come. <laughs> say, my season have come. Say, my season have come. Say, my season have come. 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 My season my season have come. Take more than he can carry. My season have come. God will open doors for you in this nation that no one has tasted. You become a voice, a political voice, a military voice, a prophetic voice. Your prophetic mantle is coming to a new realm. Say my season have come. Say, Lord, I need ministry mantle. Somebody have to be fast. Say, I need ministry mantle. Say, my season is here. Let mantle of grace rest on you. In the name of Jesus. Come to Ram. We are God. Yama Anaya Nakato Rakama Suka Palakataya. Many of you, I speak prophetically now. I speak pro somebody help help. I speak prophetically now. Where are they coming? Demon coming. I speak prophetically to you. Doors are about to be open. Oh, Shalaba, doors are about to be open. To doors, greater doors, greater doors. May God raise you beyond the expectation of your family in the name of Jesus. There are many of you here. The Lord says, It could bring her, bring her. It come unto she cut her. Your season have come. Amanu kupoho, jana katula. Everything that is fighting you, kill in the spirit realm. Bring her, bring her, bring her, bring her, bring her. Leave her, leave her. Lala bahashala. Season have come. Shalama haya mahaya. Some of you are coming into realm you've never been before. A name of bring him my hand. Bring him my king. I, I want you to wear a cloth, a ram. You have no war because God, as you know, is preparing new thing. And this thing that God is preparing, we demand uncommon grace that is not available to anybody. Because this journey is a challenging journey, yet a journey with an abundance. And if that must happen in meetings, God come with a certain cup and a certain oil to unlock realms for certain men in this realm. And even as I'm talking now, there is a fresh cup on your head. And this cup is going to sustain you for the next years. Anima kohayada. For the next years, that power of God get drunk like never before. By me, kusuka pa. Say, oh God, open doors for me. Somebody cry that cry. Oh God, open doors for me. Oh God, open doors for me. Somebody pray that. Oh God, open doors for me. Why is the door closing against church folks? Why is the doors of grace, of favor, of job, of good position closing against children? Because Satan is fighting the glory, the mantle, the church. God's people carry. What is fighting you? Who are there? Bring him. Who are there that is standing against Zerubbabel? Who are there that is standing against Zerubbabel? 
The Bible says, Thou shalt be made like a plain. There is flame on this altar. Pastor Steve, walk, come on. I just want to walk respectfully to the church. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, somebody help, somebody help. Carry that in art, carry that in art. Carry that in art. I'm a higher. I'm a king. I'm a harsher. Kaleyeto, do quick, 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 quick. Kalabahanda. Kalabahamba. Sarah, go to the place. Lamahandu Sukaba. Irama Makala Bahaya. Just come, 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 come. I want to, whatever you desire, desire and then walk in. Let your sorrow end. Let your sorrow end. Let your sorrow end. Let your sorrow now. Now walk in, walk into the red carpet. Walk into the red carpet. There is an angel waiting for you there. Yes, 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 yes. There is an angel waiting for you there. There is an angel. There is a change of guide in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is looking for people that he will bring to a worthy place. There is a place called the worthy place. Where are you? There is a place called the way the place. Chanamahaya. Say, oh Lord, open doors for me. Oh Lord, open doors for me. Father, open door for her. Father, grant him your good desires. Father, preserve his life in the name of Jesus. Somebody open up. Just talk to heaven. Somebody talk to heaven. God is releasing packages now. God is releasing packages now. Whatever you need, that is the altar is hot. You can draw, you can tap, you can receive. Whatever you need, this is your moment. The angels of God is moving. There is a new guide of angels that God released to walk in this ministry. A new guide. A guide has been changed. As of yesterday, the Lord changed a guide. Released fresh angels to walk in this house. Elama Hasokaba. Open up. The days of tolling is over. May God raise you a gospel pioneer. May your life and everything you have serve God become a reference point. Become a reference point. I unlock you gloriously in business words. Go and prosper. Somebody open up and begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Somebody pray. Sembre ni kadeyoku. Sembre ni karabozi. E saka baba baba. Jera baba hande. Somebody speak in tongues if you can. Ora baba. Sora baba. Zendra baba. Chalamba ni kadabozi. Baba zeka baba. E zambra. E zambra na kadaya. Jala baba.
Somebody open your mouth. Everybody stand up if you can and pray. Namakacha. I want you to capture something in the spirit that need to be shift on your behalf. Somebody say, Oh God, say, Oh God, upgrade my mind for your glory. Pray that prayer. Oh God, upgrade my mind for your glory. Oh Rabba Rabba Shakalaba and Rabba Shekatalaba. Oh God, upgrade my mind for your glory. Upgrade my mind for your glory. Upgrade my mind for your glory. Somebody pray the prayer. I wanted to cry out to God. This is the mountain of prayer. This is man Kamil, Elishamaha. Somebody say, Father, visit me today. Visit me today. Visit me today. The Lord's searchlight is moving in New Zealand, looking for somebody to carry a mantle that's never been there before. God. The Spirit of God wants to release business mantles, academic mantle, entertainment mantle, political mantle. There is a mantle that is in this house this hour. You can tap evangelistic mantle. There is a fresh mantle in this house that God is about to release on somebody that is hungry. Fresh mantle, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. Somebody pray. There is a fresh oil in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Fresh oil. Fresh man to a ramba saka baba zute haba a mama masaka la baba hand bring him back bring him back bring him back bring him back rabba basaka just be be here just be there rabba basaka la baba la baba just need them there need them and just talk to God in in the middle in the middle la baba saka la baba saka la baba hand ka la baba saka say oh God release fresh man to on my life, fresh oil, fresh presence. Hey, Rabba Shataha. Somebody pray. Every witchcraft that is against you is being slayed. Every tongue that has risen against you over the last years has been slayed. There is an operation that is taking place right now in your body. God is waiting to hear your voice. Open wide your mouth and I will feel it. Psalm 81 verse 10. KJV oh, and Ivy. Open wide your mouth and I will feel it. He wants to hear you. He wants to hear you. Somebody pray. Jesus. Visit us today. Visit us today. Father, let there be visitation. Present your desires to God. Present your desires to God. We have a God that heals. A God that empowers. A God that honors. A God that upgrades His people. It's your moment to be upgraded. It's your moment to be upgraded. Say, Father, I will not go until you have blessed me. I will not go until you have blessed me.
Somebody sort it out with God. He is waiting for your voice. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open wide thy mouth, and I will feel it. Open wide thy mouth, and I will feel it. Somebody pray, oh God, fill my mouth. Fill my heart. Do something in my life. Jesus, locate your people. Jesus, locate your people. Say, oh Lord, from today, I donate my mind. Say, oh God, from today, I donate my mind. Fill my mind with kingdom strategy. Fill my heart with heavenly strategy. Oh God, from today, I donate my mind, upgrade my mind for your glory. Somebody pray that prayer. Somebody pray that prayer. Lord, upgrade my mind for your glory. Upgrade my mind for your glory. In the name of Jesus. Say, oh Lord, upgrade my mind for your glory in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Say, oh God, from today, I take responsibility for New Zealand. Put a burden in my heart. Say, oh God, put a burden of New Zealand in my heart to pray for this nation to win souls and to bring glory to God. Somebody pray that prayer. Say, God, I take responsibility for New Zealand. I feel there should be more passion in the air. There should be more passion in the air. Father, I take responsibility. Oh God, put the burden of this nation in my heart. Put the burden of this nation in my heart. Put the burden of church of Jesus in my heart. Oh God, put a burden in my heart. Somebody pray that prayer. Say, say, oh God, I am available. Use me. Repeat after me. Say, oh God, I am available. Use me in any way possible. Somebody pray in a prayer. Jesus, I am available. Jesus, I am available. Jesus, I am available. Jesus, I am available. Use me, Lord, for your glory. I donate myself. I donate my time. I donate my all. Use me, Lord. I am available, Lord. Jambala katuzi lika baba. Jikala bahaya. Say, oh God, if you want to do anything in, 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 in New Zealand, if you want to do anything around the world, please don't do it without me. Somebody pray that prayer. Please don't do it without me. Pray, pray that honest prayer. Oh God, if you want to do anything in New Zealand and beyond, please don't do it without me. Somebody pray that prayer. In the name of Jesus. Now I want to pray a confessional prayer. Many Christians are having spiritual experiences. They have a lot of attack in their dream. A lot of manipulation in the dream. Demonic pollution. And please, I want you to pray. Many times, Christians are thinking what to do. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. Because of so much manipulation, the spirit realm. So this is what God does when you come to church. So please, I want you to now lift up your hands and say, Oh God, from today, I renounce every covenant I have with the enemy. Every covenant I have with demonic system, every covenant that my family have with you that has affected my productivity, my mind, my calling, my glory, 
I severe myself and my family from every illegal covenant that is working in my life, working against my success, working against my financial prosperity. I severe myself right now in the name of Jesus. Say, oh Lord, from today, I decree and I declare that every demonic doors that is fighting my glory, fighting my success, fighting my ministry, is closed. Pray with passion, it's closed. It's closed. It's closed. Say every demonic openings, every demonic openings in my life is closed now in the name of Jesus. Say, oh God, every manipulation in my dream that is sucking away my destiny, contaminating my glory is flushed out now. Every blood in my system that the enemy has injected into my spirit to pollute me is, is ejected now. Eject out of my spirit. Flush out of my soul. In the name of Jesus. Say, in the name of Jesus, I flush out every blood, every demonic water, every demonic presence in my system. Everything caused sickness in my system. I flush it out right now in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus, every wicked attack that is attacking my children is canceled right now. In the name of Jesus, I cancel demonic emergencies. Say in Jesus name, there shall be no emergency against me, against my children, against our church, against my future. Every demonic emergency is cancelled, is cancelled, is cancelled right now. Say in the name of Jesus, 2024 is my year of greatest breakthrough. <laughs> Say it's in the name of Jesus, 2024 is my year of greatest breakthrough. It, it's my year of greatest breakthrough. Say it from your heart, it's my year of greatest breakthrough. It's my year of greatest breakthrough. Say in the name of Jesus, 2024, it's my year of ministry breakthrough. It's my year of financial breakthrough. It's my year of marriage of breakthrough. Say in the name of Jesus, my breakthrough is now. My sick time is now. My appointed time is now. In Jesus' name. Lift up your hand. There's some of us here. You've been troubled demonically. There's been battle over your head. They have discussed you in the spirit. Planning to cut you off. But I said that's a lie from the pit of hell. If there is anyone here, the enemy has conspired to knock out. In this presence, anyone here that the enemy have planned to take away, to destroy, I ask the spirit of the Holy God to locate you now. I ask the angel, let the light of his presence locate you. Let the light of his presence locate you. One, let the light of his presence locate you. Please be in the spirit. Let the light of his presence locate you. One, two, three. Let the light of his presence locate you. I ask the light, the angelic, the angel in oppression, locate you and lose your chance. One, two, three, by the left, by the right. Loser, loser, loser. Loser. By the left, by the right. 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 Open up for the Lord. I ask the Holy Spirit to locate you. One, two, three, receive. (laughs) 
if there is any chains on your leg, any mask over your face, spiritual mask of poverty, your pain, of destruction, I command that mask to catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Any mask over you, catch fire and be used by God. Thank you, Lord. Use her, Lord. Use her, Lord. I feel the fire just enter you. I feel the fire in my hands. In Jesus' name. There is more fire God is releasing. I release voltage. I release. I release voltage. I release voltage. Voltage. That is a voltage that has been released. High voltage. High voltage. Be connected to everyone now. High voltage. High voltage. High voltage. High voltage. High voltage of His power. I connect you to that voltage. May God give you wonderful vocal cord for the race singers here, race lawyers, doctors, pastors, leaders, race businessmen. Let there be open door. High voltage. High voltage. High voltage. There is a fresh voltage. <coughs> there is a fresh voltage. There is a fresh. Say, Lord, say in the name of Jesus, let the high voltage of his presence be connected to me now. Be connected to me now. Yes, 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 yes. Something will be resting on you. Something is resting. Doors are opening. Your mind are opening up. Clarity is coming. High voltage. Voltage for I thank you for high voltage, high voltage. Say, Lord, connect this fire. Say, Lord, connect this. Give me your hand, high voltage. Give me your hand. High voltage. High voltage of his presence. God is connecting voltage to you. Lord, do something for this woman. High voltage of God's power. You are hungry for God. You are hungry for God. There is more, more, more coming to you. For the grant her her, her desire, for the touch her, do something in her life. <laughs> High voltage, somebody help. Shalaba lava shalom. There is a high voltage fire. God. Somebody open up, say, Lord, release a voltage I have not experienced before. 
release a voltage I've not experienced before. Yes, there is more God wants to release before we close. Release a voltage I've not experienced before. Take yours now. There's still a reserve. There's still a reserve here. Take yours. In Jesus' name. One more thing the Lord wants to do. He wants to release laughter. Yes, it's already happening. Yes, yes, take yours. Take yours. Some of you have not been laughing because of challenges and pain. Now God wants to release laughter everywhere. I declare spirit of laughter. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> laughter, laughter, laughter. You will laugh again. It's a sign that you will laugh again. <laughs> Father, the wind of laughter, the wind of laughter, the wind of laughter. May God fill your mouth with laughter. If you've never laughed for some time, a real laughter. May God confirm it right now. Receive laughter. Receive laughter. Receive laughter. <laughs> Father, let thy people get drunk with laughter. Fill their heart with joy. <laughs> loose tongues. Loose tongues. Loose tongues. Yes, yes, you receive yours. He said, I want to fill your mouth with laughter. I want to confirm to you that I will do that which I, I will do, which I promise you. And as I can, but somebody got the back of all three, receive laughter now. Oh, now my am a sakara. Father, reward your daughter's labor. Father, reward the labor of my wife. <laughs> Holy Spirit is still filling hearts. Release. This season, this year, may God fill your heart and your mouth with laughter, with laughter, with laughter, with laughter. You will no, you will no longer cry for nothing. Woman of God, come. <laughs> Lift up your hand. <laughs> Father, lose her heart and her mind. Fill her heart and her mouth for laughter for your family and for your generation. Laugh for their breakthrough. I release the Holy Ghost laughter. <laughs> unstoppable until we say it's enough in the Holy Ghost receive <laughs> women of God come God want to give you a laughter just come God want to give you laughter he said you will laugh it will be a sign a sign of what is coming 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 he said don't hold it back laugh for him laugh for him laugh for him For your whole entire generation. Love for their salvation.
the Lord is correcting destinies. The Lord is correcting destinies. The Lord is correcting destinies. Destinies are being corrected. Lineages are being corrected. Your root is being corrected. Your ancestral root are being corrected in the spirit realm. Thank you, Lord. Shalama mama sataha. In Jesus' name. Evangelist Joshua, Joseph, please come, come ahead. We are running out of time. Some of you that have classes today, we will give you another opportunity. Okay? Please don't be disappointed. Sometimes we just have to obey the Holy Spirit. Man of God, please, sir, I want you to come and speak over this ministry. Um, we, I believe God has given you favor in this nation. I believe God has there's acceptance. I believe that sometimes people don't accept the evangelists. You no, know, some pastors. But I believe God has given you acceptance. I believe you have a pure heart and you want to do ministry to the glory of God. And I believe there's a mantle you carry that is pulling what God is pulling in your ministry. You are a son of this soil. I've already received what you proclaimed before. But I feel again that you speak a word over this ministry and, and ask God to do something that we've never experienced before. Yeah, thank you, sir. I just see the ground has been broken up once again. Many of you in this place, many of you in this house, many of you in the sound of my voice, you'll recognise that God has been breaking up the fallow ground of your heart, that He's been re-soiling and re-toiling the ground in your life. And the Lord says it's not to break you. It's not to disappoint you. It's not to make you feel like you're going through the dry place and you're going through the hard time, but it's so that I can send the rain of my Spirit once again into this nation. And so the seeds that I've put into this church and into this ministry can begin to flourish. There's many seeds that are in the ground and there's many seeds that have been sown and yet the harvest hasn't been seen to the full measure that the harvest could. But the Lord says, I'm sending that ladder rain upon this ministry once again and you're going to see the seeds that have been sown into that harvest field and the times you've gone forth weeping bearing seeds for sowing you shall come again rejoicing bringing your sheaves with you because it is a time for harvest it is a time for harvest and that you shall rise up in this church that you shall rise up with a harvest ministry and they shall be an evangelistic ministry and I will begin to do something this year in the youth of this ministry that'll be like a fresh rain that will pour out once again and there'll be life that begins to flow because I see there were some leaders that were taken out and it set you back a few years but the Lord said this time that is coming this refrain that is refreshing this refreshing that has begun to pour out will not be kept will not be stopped and will not be capped and will not be stolen because I have put around you the hearts of the people that are ready for the rain that is about to be poured out upon this ministry once again. Get ready for the harvest fields for it shall happen in the young people, says the Lord. And we call forth those young people. We say, let the rain come once again. Let the rain fall once again. For many have positioned their hearts to be right before me and they've allowed the ploughing of their hearts from the apostolic anointing to till the ground of their lives once again. And it's for the latter rain to come into the harvest in Jesus' Name. And everybody said and shout to the Lord, Hallelujah!
we know that because of time, the spirit of prophet is subject to the prophet, we can proceed. But I believe there's still presence hovering. Even as I'm talking now, I'm feeling like rain. That the heaven is open now. There's an open heaven. You can tap into it. Some of you, if you want to stay back and just pray through, you can do so. Uh, but God has changed something. But before we go, we have an amazing, amazing man of God. That God is on way. We, we are pre preparing for an, another person. Who we are preparing for a different minister. It's not actually our plan. It's, not, it's God's plan. And so God, God brought him. Even when we are not thinking that we're going to have him. Hello, somebody. And God decided that it pleases him. Are we still online? Are you, are you uh, offline? I hope you're not offline. Huh? Okay, I can see you. So, even when God, um, um, we didn't plan this thing, but God decided to bring out this amazing prophetic man of God in this country to be part of what we are doing. And I believe that you have been blessed with his ministry. His, his testimony is amazing. You can go with those testimonies and believe God. What I see in him is obedient. It's obedient. It's obedience is the key. Christians are disobedient. That's our problem. We love God, but we are disobedient. Stubbornness you know, makes us become disobedient. So we want to just you know, show our honor. And in this church, you know, we honor, you know, elders in the body of Christ. He's one of the elders in this country that is speaking over the realm of this country, over the map of this country. Believing God. If you can see that he's believing God for revival, he has a burden for this nation. And, he, and he's doing his bit. And God has blessed us with his mantle. And I receive from this mantle today. I receive myself. In Jesus' name. So we want to honor God's servant. You know, where are our... <laughs> so, uh, let's honor God's servant. Amen. God is still releasing packages. Please open up and...
trying to get me. The doors of heaven is open, not just windows. Doors are open. I, 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 mantle just been released. Take us. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Father, fresh rain. God is cooking some visions. God is cooking some vision now. The, the Lord Jesus is cooking some vision. Now the Lord will be putting prophetic word. Some of you now, a garment of prophetic will come on you. And Father, the spirit of prophet is subject to the prophet. Now we say in the name of Jesus, let there be calmness in the air. Lord, we release calmness. Lord, we release calmness. In the name of Jesus, let there be calmness in the spirit. Father, we draw. Chala Barando, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, a prophetic mantle. Father, choose somebody. Holy Ghost, choose somebody. Put a prophetic word in his or her mouth. A prophetic word for the next move, for this nation, for us, for this ministry, and for the body of Christ. We ask for a prophetic mantle to come on one person or two or three. Now I receive yours. Some of you, we have a vision now. A vision. God will be in the spirit, everybody. God will open your eye. If God put a word in your mouth. Now, we ask for the laughter to cease in the spirit. And now we ask for a prophetic mantle. A prophetic word. Father, cast mantle on somebody. Now I receive, become a seer. Father, open the eyes of people, distribute gifts, activate gifts. Some of them that are prophets, you know, pastors, evangelists, businessmen, politicians, inter, you know, academicians, intercessors, raise them now. 
all raised ministers here, raised men, women with greater mantle, people with unquenchable favor. We let your gift begin to be activated. Some of you will be having open vision. Please be in the spirit, open vision. Now the Lord will open your eye to show you things. Let thy eye be open and let thy tongue be loose. <laughs> Father, raise prophets. Father, speak for your servants are listening. Father, speak for your servants are listening. Holy Spirit, lose their mat, lose her mat, losing her mat, losing her mat. Father, losing her mat, losing her mat. Losing our throat. Let your gift, your hidden gift that has been in hibernation be, oh, be loose right now. No more hibernation. No more hibernation. Let thy gift be activated now. Spirit of activation take it, begin to take place. Spirit of activation begin to sweep here. Prophets be raised. Business people be raised, evangelists be raised, academicians be raised, pastors, apostles, Father, begin to raise major ministries here now. Rama Sakata, receive major ministries, major ministries, major anointing, major mantles. Father, lose her, use her, use her, use her, use her, use her, use her. Use her, use her, use her. Father, use her, use her, use her, use her, use her. Use her. Use her. prophetess in this nation. <laughs> Let there be an encounter right now. Let there be an encounter right now. <laughs> Let there be an encounter in your case. Let there be an encounter. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It is called activation. Be activated. Let thy tongue be activated. Let thy gift be activated. God is raising hands, raising people, raising destinies in the name of Jesus.
This is the activation we are talking about. People been activa activated financially. There's going to be a wave of financial prosperity, a wave of flow. God is going to release the financial grace to your life. There's going to be financial open doors and special strange encounters, strange grace, strange favor. Strange favor. Thank you, Lord. Bring her. If you know you received something, I want you to come. Some of you, if you saw any vision, whatever. God is dealing with her. And God want to put something in her mouth. God is dealing with <sighs> Father, the gold in her, let it come alive. Let it come alive. Let it come alive. Become a light in your family. Break yoke and shackles in your family. Become a point of contact. The greater things. And every other cloud I commanded, every wicked cloud that is not of God, I deserve it. And I command it to evaporate. <laughs> Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. If you receive something, Please quickly come and share with us. If you saw any picture, if you saw anything, because we are coming here by 6.30, right? Uh, but remember, we are camping, so this is camp. We have a room here now. The room is available? Is the room available? Yes, for the For women, right? Yes. Huh? All, all right. Because the women, we have a room. So one of brothers do, donated us room. So for the woman, if you want to go and refresh the after, you can go. Some of you that are living far. Amen. If anybody have a word, if you've got a word, if God showed you anything, let's quickly take it so that we can release the man of God. Man of God, thank you for being around. I appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. So, let's take very, very quick, quick. One minute, two minutes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, what a joy. What a joy. Moments of confirmation of what I saw back in 2017 before you went to Fiji. Yeah. Now I see again us flying right across our land. And five acres of that land, when you say yes, I, as the leader of our clan, mm. am standing here with humility to say, let's use that land. Mm. Because the people of Fiji must live. They must see. That when the word of God is activated mm. by the apostle, by the prophet, mm. amen. amen, it's got to be seen. Mm. You sow a seed, you expect a harvest. Hallelujah. Mama is running a little ministry that's called the sowing and reaping, and I'm seeing Hallelujah. things happen. And we saw, I saw us in this flight across. If you fly to no sorry from Nandi, you have to fly across our mountains, my home mountains, and Mama is the head of the clan. You know? I, they cannot move until mama comes in. So with humility, I'm asking you, men of God, receive this for Fiji. Receive this for my people. Receive this for the gospel to be preached. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, mama. Somebody help you. <laughs> Somebody. 
Anyone else with a new testimony or experience? Is anyone you receive a word? We want to very fast so that we can close you guys to go and refresh. Come back. This place is it's a angel's wings over this place. I lay down in this place. Flash of lightning come out of it. Angels are surround this place. Red lights over that side. Golden lights on this side. Purple lights on that side. White light here. I saw a tractor, a, a massive big tractor with purple lining on it. I saw dragging disc behind it, plowing the field. I saw people throwing seeds on this ground. And it rained. It rains. The glory of God land on this ground and there's trees coming out of it. Fruit trees of all sorts coming out of it. And I saw everyone and tended to the grapes of the great wines, tended to it. And then the angels of God, the golden dressed angels of God, turn up to the purple one dressed in purple. They came and they worship God right oh. here. They worship God right here. And I hear the word says, be still, be still, son. Know that I am God. I will never leave nor forsake you. I will always be there. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, give your mother. Man, welcome. Give your mother right here. Yes. Man, stand in the middle. Middle short. Stand here. We should come here. Just stand in the same lane. Anyway, stand in the same lane. Now, when you go to the hospital, sometimes they do x-ray. Right? They want to check you out. <laughs> now, we want to check out again what is in that place. Now, I want you to walk with reverence to that place. You can't walk in there. Three of you walk the same step. Begin to walk. Which one? Now, it can walk in there. Begin to walk. <laughs> All right, we are testing it, right? He said, of what the angel he saw. So you could see that there is something there. Okay? He, said, he wants to walk, but he can't. He can walk. He can, they can't be able to walk and enter and walk freely. Now, what sees their leg if there is no God? Hello, somebody. Because oftentimes we don't know that as we're here, the presence of God is here. Sometimes we think it's empty building. That is actually things that we're not seeing. If our eyes is open to mirrors of angel, the things God is removing, the shackles, the manacles, some replacement. Some of you now have become alternative of God for this nation. Some of you, God have chosen somebody today. God have raised somebody today. You may think you are in an ordinary place, but God, there's an exchange taking place, reposition taking place, move of God. Exchange is happening very fast in the spirit. Wow. Destinies are being sharpened. We can continue to test them because they can't walk. 
<laughs> so we release them to go. God bless you. <laughs> yeah. Amen. You can go. Is there another person so that we can? I'm feeling for you guys so that we can grab some rest and come back. Is there any person that received something? Please come. Um, as we were, as, as I was standing over there and just asking the Holy Spirit to speak, um, sorry, my voice is kind of gone, sorry. Um, I saw like in the air, the, like Aotearoa, but around it was like, it looked like a snake, but it's actually like a chain. And then I saw, like, it looks like it's wrapped around like snake, but it's actually like a chain and it's wrapped around the name Aotearoa and... And then I saw next a bunch of young people, and a lot of them were from Edify with like chain, um, with swords, swords of fire, cutting those chains. Um, and I did see these people from Edify as well. So I believe the Lord is saying that the new generation will break the chains that have been holding Aotearoa down and how God wants to live because Aotearoa means land of the long white cloud. The clouds are meant to be up, but the chain was kind of holding it down. And I believe that the Lord is saying that in this season that us as young people will have, the ch- uh, have a sword of fire and will cut those chains down. Mm. Thank you. Lift up your hands. I'm going to touch her. God, unveil her eyes, make them all. Unveil her eyes, them all. Unveil her eyes, them all. And receive wind of grace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Is there another person? Thank you, Lord. All right. We're going to quickly close. Any other person? Rotundere. Tundere. Actually, I, was, I wanted to give you a word when I was. You have hunger. You are. There's a, there's a the hand of God on your life. God did not bring you to this country just to make money. <laughs> I believe God brought you to this country for more. I don't know. When you were in Africa, were you in any, any department of any ministry? Eh? Uh, yes, sir. Have you done any pastoral work? No. Yeah, no. Um, she just confirmed something. That's why I stood up. I didn't want to stand up. But um, what I saw was a thick cloud, dark cloud underneath. But what it was underneath was a very thick white cloud cloud covering it. So when she mentioned the meaning of this nation, I immediately knew what that vision meant. So I, it means there's a white cloud covering a dark cloud underneath it. So I think it's a way of the white cloud taking over. So when you have mentioned that it means the thick white clouds, right? land of white cloud. So that's what I saw. I don't know the meaning of uh, Aotearoa. Is that how to pronounce it? Well, um, I'm new here and I've never researched anything about the meanings of certain words. Thank you. Say, so Lord Jesus, just lift your hand. Pour special grace on my life. For your glory in this nation. (laughs) Receive mancho. Receive mantle to do something that will bring glory to God in this nation. You will not be under. You will rise from glory to glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 
All right, we want to close. Can I have him? Yeah. We, our, our next session is 650, 630, right? 630, yeah. So some of you, you may have to just, you don't need to go home if you, if you're, if you're, run, if you're far from here. Manongo, please come, sir. <laughs> wow, what a powerful session. Um, Evangelist Joseph, wow. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. On behalf of KMGC, just want to honor you, sir. Thank you so much for being so open and willing to come and really bless us and allowing the Holy Spirit to use you. We really honor you, sir. This is a ministry that honors those around. Apostle has always set a standard for us to honor everyone around us. So we honor you, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for staying. Thank you for laughing with us. Thank you for making us laugh. Thank you so much for imparting the Holy Spirit and more things and more gifts. Thank you so much for everything that you do. We really honor you, sir, and we honor your family. We thank you so much. Um, and we do have a few things that we want to say to you as well. Thank you so much. Again, welcome you all in the presence of God. Today, I take away to trust in the power of God as he activates the goodness that he has amongst us. Evangelist Joseph, we have something to read for you and Leslie. We can send it to you so that you can pass on to her. But this is to honor you both as you carry the ministry, a globe. And it goes like this. In the depths of your souls, a sacred flame ignited, a holy desire so pure and active movement of the spirit. So as favor can show and give to the man of God, we've just put in the word active into his box. An active movement of the spirit across the world, not across Aotearoa, across the world. An adventure embarked. A journey divine called forth to answer, to heed the sign with the banner raised high they marched ahead to the farthest places. You and Leslie will march ahead to the farthest places where hope had fled. In the battlefield of hearts, they wage a war against darkness and doubt. You saw, for they envision a fearless you envision a fearless generation rising on eagles' wings. With each mission, pioneer's mission undertaken, you witness anew the hand of God, faithful and true in His excellence, Shining through generations, past a legacy of love destined to last forever. Gratitude from KMGC. Gratitude from our father in the house and our mother in the house. KMGC a whole. Fills their hearts, yet words fall short. Guided by his light. You will journey endlessly, dedicated to love not one, but to touch many souls. In Jesus' name, amen.
Yeah, um, so Pastor Joseph, we have created this beautiful frame to put in your home. It's all the pictures that you have taken all throughout your journey with the missions. <laughs> so we do have some quotes here that represent, uh, that are from KMGC, that represent your journey with Christ. Amen. To sing. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And uh, we have you. We have the heart of okay, MGC. <laughs> so as you're going home, yeah, this KMGC is inscribed here. We did it specially for you. Amen. So that um, Anytime you see, you will always remember, you will know we are together, Thank we are walking together. Thank you, brother. Yeah. You will always, I'm sure, remember and pray for us. Yeah. yeah. So we want to. Um, wow, that's you. amazing. We present. We printed extras for you. Okay, so, okay, great. So. <laughs> well, yeah, awesome. I know exactly where that's going. <laughs> Most I've been honoured in any church oh, <laughs> in ten years of ministry. So thank you so much. Thank you, sir. That's yeah. a huge honour. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. We love you, sir. Well, yeah, we You're love welcome. you, man. God bless you. Shall we stand up and clap for the man of God? <laughs> Shall we clap for the man of God as he walks? Praise God. Amen. Man of God, have a great ministry, beautiful ministry. His prophetic insight is quite strong. And I believe today we have received. Amen. Amen. And may we remember to pray for him. Please stretch your hand, stretch for your, for your hand and bless him and his family. Only God knows what he goes through, yet keep doing this job, keep doing this work. Father, this is your servant. Father, we called him emergency and he responded. And Lord, we pray today that you bless your servant. Above all, preserve his life. Keep him. Even as he travels to Philippines. Oh, thank you, Lord. Man of God, the Lord say you will see things you've never seen in your ministry. There's going to be a fresh dimension that will follow you as you go to Philippines this week. There will be so much that will happen in your ministry. After you come back, you have hunger to go again. Because there's going to be a fresh flow of God in you and through you and to them. So, Lord, we pray for preservation of your, of your servant, of the wife, of the children. The enemy will not cut you short. The hand of God in your life in this nation will be known. This voice will be heard. And no one will shut it down. But as your servant goes to the open doors for him. Doors he has never experienced. Bless him. And thank you for using him to bless us. We receive from his brooks. We receive from his brook, from his ministry. Everything your servant have deposited, we receive. And cause us to run with it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We just want to quickly share the grace because we are coming back here again. I don't even know what it is because this, this time, I don't know why you guys put time that is not working. Yesterday, since yesterday, it's not been working. I'm wondering. That is confusion. <laughs> it's not been working since yesterday. Okay, may we, may we share the grace?